the centipede questions the snake. The centipede questioned the snake, saying, I move along using a hundred legs, but I still can't go fast. When I'm being chased by human beings, there are times I wish I had wings. When I look at you, I see you have no legs at all, but you move along quite easily. Surely this should be insufficient, and you should be handicapped. What technique do you have to move along so easily like this without even a single leg? The snake said, Why should I have technique? If I simply point my head in the direction in which my mind wants to go, my body follows along. Looking at you, I can see that you go along by moving your many legs. Surely, when there are many affairs, the mind is pressed. By what technique do you carry your many legs along like this without mixing them all up? The centipede said, It is not that I use my many legs by putting my mind into each one individually. When my heaven-given faculties move, then my hundred legs move accordingly and carry my body along as well. Moreover, my mind isn't pressed at all. So what kind of special technique should I use? An earthworm close by sighed and said, Well now, men are clear enough about what they've understood, or about what they've understood, but can't infer one thing from another. The men who lecture on the four books and the six classics with their magnificent and noble principles would none of them understand commentary on their own minds. Hmm? Thus, once separated from their books, they are unable to understand the mind at all. They only listen and memorize and then interpret the words. You hear in this? Yeah? A lot of you are lecturers and college professors in your various disciplines, uh, various canons. Thus, once separated from their books, they are unable to understand the mind at all. They only listen and memorize, then interpret the words. How much less could they know this mind, this body, and the creation and metamorphosis they enter and exit? The centipede's many legs, the snake's lack of legs altogether, both are the creator's doing and are incomprehensible to the snake and the centipede themselves. Thus, the centipede's many legs gives him no adversity, and the snake with no legs at all does not find himself handicapped. Now, if they were to do something artificial, like take the wings from the flying insect and attach them to their own bodies, they would not only be unable to fly, but the wings would become obstructions, and they would be unable to walk as well. The long legs of the crane and the short legs of the wild duck are both their own natures. If you thought the crane's legs too long and cut them back a bit, or cut them back a good bit, the crane would be in a great pain, or would be in great pain and would die. If you considered the legs of the duck to be short and extended them out a good bit, the duck would be in great pain and would probably not even be able to stand up for some time. This means that even if you improve the legs aesthetically, you would not be leaving a thing to its nature and it would be unable to function. For the most part, men may know that there is a function to something, but will what or will not know how to ground themselves in that function's nature. They know that something works on its own from its very creation, but they don't know how to leave it to do so. Thus, they use all sorts of their own wisdom and clever wit, but daily go against the God-given principles of their own creation. Look, there are those that reside in trees, those that swim in water, those that lie down in fields, and those that live in holes. Dogs and monkeys alike have four legs, but a monkey climbs up a tree quite easily, while a dog can't do that at all. A horse can carry a heavy load and go a long distance, but it can't catch mice, like a cat. Each has its own unique genius, which is quite unlike the others. This is a nature we receive from heaven. The centipede and the snake have different natures, and their appearances are different too. The centipede has been provisioned with legs. The snake may not understand the technique for going along freely with no feet, but that's not a problem. Even if the legless snake hears of the centipede's technique for using its hundred legs, there's no way that he can put it to use. I, too, have no arms or legs and have no eyes or nose, and even though it's my own body, I have no idea which is my head and which is my tail. I've never really considered this right up to the present, but it's always been enough. If you think 
this is indeed the way things should be, you will not be compelled to seek things that you would like to know. From time to time I sing a song, but I've never learned exactly what the tune is. Above I eat lumps of earth, below I drink from the yellow springs, but I seek for nothing in the world. If I'm naturally discovered by a chicken, that's as far as my fate goes. This is the worm speaking. If there's life, there's death. Why should I be afraid? If you look at it from the point of view of the day they died, Peng Tzu's 800 years and an infant's dying within seven days of its birth are the same. It is foolish to think that all things are not limited by life and death or that we must have good fortune, but not bad. Hmm? Yin and yang, the chi that, gives, that either gives life or kills, all of these are the current of heaven's way. I, too, am but one thing within heaven and earth. I am born in the midst of creation, and within creation I prosper, wither, and disappear. Sunshine or shadow, good or bad fortune, these are the commands of the Creator. How could I dare to avoid what the Creator has done? I just entrust my body to the Creator and don't intrude my own willfulness while I'm here. This is knowing the general drift of the way. <laughs>